Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, we're doing Dazer by Haploves today. This is their first album since 2016's self-titled debut album, which I thought was personally great. I give it an 84. And it's the last musical drop since 2017's Wrong Song, which is a great song, to be honest. It's really good. And then, all of a sudden, this year, they dropped their, their break. I guess it's the first big hit. I mean, to be fair, it's got like 100k listens, so I'm going to count as a hit. Their first big hit, A Little Why. Which got on the show Rate Your Music by uh, Fantano, on Anthony Fantano, the popular music review critic. And of course he said, oh, this is like, this is just like Radiohead. He basically he said, eh, it's alright, but it sounds like Radiohead. And I would say, to a certain extent, it is basically what Greta Van Fleet is to Led Zeppelin, but to Radiohead, you know? And it, it's stupid, because, you know, sure, when I first heard it, I thought it was too. But the more I listen to it, the more I can pick out some difference musically and lyrically. The band pushed through that, and... Lo and behold, last week or so, they created Dazer, an amazing album, a very top-notch album. Uh, fucking amazing, really, really, I think it's the best of work. Now, the album length is below average, about 30 minutes, but it doesn't overstay its work. It's short and sweet, for a reason. Um, yeah. Now, you can definitely hear some Radiohead and Vampire Weekend vibes in this album, for sure. But they're not overbearing or too in your face about it. It's just kind of something you kind of just notice. They also kind of borrow some things from other subgenres like synth pop, especially in the song Small Hours, which is a really good song, to be honest. Like, sure, they borrow sounds from all this, but they keep their own original sound, uh, which is cool, really cool. The band took what they had from the debut, uh, they took their sound, they improved it, and in my opinion, they almost perfected it. This is fucking amazing. Now there's so much going on in the instrumental in the instrumental department, like the simplistic drums that make the entire rest of the songs just pop, pop out. They're very good. Uh, the little synths that are in the background and foreground also run very nicely together. And the slick guitar playing also just brings everything to make an amazing instrumental album. This album, I can like pull out instrumentals and just play it themselves and like it's incredible. The instrumentals are amazing. And what, what, what would we be without the, the absolutely stunning vocals on this album? They sound a little bit Tom York-esque at some points, especially on the falsettos, which I think were very well done. In fact, I would like to see more falsetto. But yeah, this guy sang the absolute hell out of this album. It is incredible. Like, it kind of blends with the music, but... It also kind of stands out, and it's because of, he put on such a good performance in this album. You can really tell, and it, it's just great. Now, the lyrics, they're really good. I mean, they aren't like some, you know, next-level insane shit, but they're really solid lyrics. There's not anything that's cringy or bad. They're solid. I give the lyrics an 8 to a 7. They're really good. And the lyrics are really good on the tracks, the slow tracks, like 1010 and... They're also really solid in a little line for the breakup. Uh, now, despite being released the same week, the same day, as the two biggest albums, some of the biggest albums of the year, the new Lana Del Rey record, Norman fucking Rockwell, and the new Tool record, Fear and Autism, this album holds its own. In fact, I'd say it stands out. I'm, it, it really, really stands out. It's honestly my top five favorite albums of the year. Check it out. I'm feeling a an 89 on this song, on this 